Hey guys, and welcome to my German Civ Overview. In this video, I'll be going over the unique units and technologies of the Germans, as well as the unique and team cards available to them, and then finally wrapping up with some gameplay to give you an idea of how the civilization plays overall. So to start things out, uh, let's go over the civilization bonus. So Germans receive Ulans with every home city shipment, and they begin with three settler wagons instead of their normal villagers. So Ulans are these uh, cavalry that the Germans get, and they're basically hand cavalry that sacrifice uh, hit points for attack, and we'll go over them more in a little bit. Um, but yeah, depending on what cards you get, and we'll also look at the cards in a second, but depending on what card you send, um, you can get you know a certain amount of Ulans with each card. So this is a pretty interesting Civ bonus. It also means that each of your shipments take uh, longer to, uh, like it takes longer for you to get the experience for these shipments, so you get less shipments overall. But you do get this civilization bonus. So this can be good in a few different scenarios. You know, either you might be going for a rushing or mid-game push strategy, in which case you get some free units to go along with you. Uh, or if you're going for more of a booming and defensive strategy, then these guys will just give you some free military units to help defend your base while you boom. So pretty good. And then the settler wagons are the uh, unique um, German villager uh, that doesn't show up on here for some reason, but. Um, essentially, the settler wagon is the equivalent of two villagers in a lot of ways, so they cost two population space. However, they cost 100 food and 100 wood to make instead of the usual 200 food for a two settlers. Uh, and then they gather, you know, essentially twice as much as the normal villager. So they can be useful in a lot of different scenarios. So one is they can, you know, save population space on plantations or farms uh, so that you can make less plantations and just have them all be settler wagons on there. Uh, you can also take them to build walls and things like that because they build things a lot faster than normal than normal settlers, um, especially because they don't have the the decay of having multiple you know villagers trying to build it. Like if you have two villagers trying to build one building, you'll get some diminishing returns from that. But if you have the settler wagon, then it's pretty much double the rate of one villager, so that can be pretty good for building things. Um, yeah, and, and there's some settler wagon shipments you can get, which will just boost your economy um, overall. So kind of interesting to start with the three settler wagons instead. Um, this can be good and bad. It's it's good, you know, this is equivalent to like, uh, what is it, six villagers or six settlers. But it does mean that you might have more downtime since, you know, anytime one of these guys is moving around, it really means that two villagers are moving around. So you might have a little bit more idle time at the beginning too. So overall, I think it's you know equivalent to other other uh, villager starts from other civilizations. I don't think it's too different. You just have to be careful how you how you use them and don't give make them have a lot of idle time. Um, anyways, so next we have the royal guard units. So the upgraded um, guard units that they have are the skirmisher or the Prussian needle gun, and these can get a lot of good upgrades where they become a. Uh, pretty fast too so these are these will be very good uh, skirmishes into the late game and then we have the ulans which we talked about a little bit or the Sh shapa ulans um so yeah you can upgrade your your special ulans even more to to make them very good these are also units that can scale really well into the late game probably one of the the best um late game hand cavalry once they have all their upgrades uh pretty comparable to like the russian cossack when they're fully upgraded um not quite as good but pretty close um so we went over the settler wagon unique unit um then we have oh sorry actually i skipped over the the ulans here real quick um so the ulans also have a 30 percent resistance to range damage and they have a high attack at the expense of hit points so they sacrifice some of their health for a, a higher attack um but otherwise they're pretty comparable to other hand cavalry and they can also switch to trample mode like a lot of other cab for a slower AoE attack. Um, yeah, so that's the Ulans. And then the Doppel Soldners um, are heavy swordsmen with a, a sweeping attack, so they get a splash attack. Um, and then these guys are really pretty slow, um, but high HP infantry that do the splash attack. And they also have very heavy siege damage. Um, they also have a 3x bonus versus cav and a 2x bonus versus light inf or shock infantry. So good against cav and light infantry. Uh, they also have the cover mode where they move half as fast, do half as much damage, but they take 50% less damage. Um, so, you know, if you're in range of towers and stuff like that, you could use cover mode while you siege if you wanted to do that. Um, and then they resist 20% of hand damage. 
So really slow, but really powerful um, heavy infantry in these guys. Uh, next we have the War Wagon, and this is a pretty interesting one. Um, similar to the War Wagon from uh, AoE 2 actually, so kind of fun to see it here too. Um, so the War Wagon is a, a very high hit point unit uh, with a slow but high damage ranged attack. And it actually counters cavalry, which is, you know, probably not what you would expect, but they have a 3x bonus versus hand cavalry, uh, and they have a 2 times bonus versus artillery. So good against cavalry or, or artillery. And they also have a 20% resistance to hand damage. So even if someone gets into melee combat, they do have a resistance, so they're going to be pretty resilient to that as well. Um, so with that, that's all their unique units. Um, before we jump into the cards, let's go ahead and check out their unique monastery upgrades real quick. So they get a couple of these. Um, so first they have Tilly's Discipline. All your infantry march faster, but cost slightly more from now on. So this is something that could be you know, useful in the very late game. Um, it's, it's what I was talking about with the skirmishers. So if you get this upgrade, your skirmishers will be very quick. Um, and they do cost more, but you know, in the late game, you should have a good enough economy to, to manage that. So um, pretty good upgrade here. They'll make your infantry very quick. Oh, also good for you know those wee handers to make them very fast. Um, yeah, so pretty good upgrade there. And then we have Wallenstein's contract. Mercenary shipments are free. This costs 3,000 gold, though. Um, so this could be useful. Um, it's only shipments, you have to remember, but you do have some infinite mercenary shipments that you could keep sending. So yeah, if you're going into the very late game, you could definitely pick this up. You probably won't get it. You know, It's probably not worth taking this um, until you get to the very late game, and that's when you're going to want to send those really expensive shipments. Um, I don't think it's that good. Just because by that point you're already going to have an economy that's good enough to hire those anyways. But I think it could be interesting if you had like a, some kind of mercenary only strategy where you boom up um, and then you use this card and then you just send a bunch of mercenaries um, and somehow get a lot more experience. So I think it could be good in niche situations, but not as good in just like general situations. And then lastly, uh, we have this Y-Hander. So ships 10, uh, sorry, 12 Doppelsoldners from your homeland. In addition, all Doppelsoldner hit points are increased by 10%. So if you're going to be building a lot of Doppelsoldners, these unique uh, Monastery upgrades are actually pretty critical because um, you're going to want to get this for the 10 extra 10% extra hit points, and then you're going to want to get Tilly's Discipline for the 20% extra movement speed. Um, so yeah, pretty good uh, unique Monastery upgrades for the Germans here. Will definitely help you a lot depending on the strategy that you're going with. Um, and then lastly, they, the revolts they have, um, available to them, they have, uh, they have the Argentina revolt, the Grand Colombia revolt, and a Hungary revolt. Um, so those are the options you have there. Um, and we'll go into this a little bit more when we look at the cards in a second, but they also in general just have, uh, very good mercenary options. And I don't think you can see it from here, but... They have access to pretty much every mercenary, I think. I think aside from like the Ronin, and it shows it here. I don't think this is correct, but I think aside from the Ronin and um, the Manchu, I think. I can't exactly remember, but anyways, yeah, they have access to pretty much all the mercenaries. Um, so yeah, a lot of mercenary options uh, with the saloon or just through their cards. So definitely a lot of good options there also. And I think that covers kind of all their unique units and everything around their technology tree. So with that, let's go ahead and hop in and look at uh, some of the decks that you can make with the Germans. So now on to the German unique cards. So first we have two settler wagons. Um, so you, you're probably going to want these like two and three settler wagon shipments um, in your deck just to kind of boost your economy in the early game. This is the equivalent of four villagers, and this is the equivalent of uh, six villagers. So, and you get plus two Ulans in the Commerce Age. So these are pretty good um, early game shipments just to boost your economy. So you're probably almost always going to want to take those. And then we have Capitalism, so you get a 1.25 coin trickle rate. Um, if you're going for like a mercenary heavy strategy, this is pretty good to pick up early game uh, if you can fit it in. Um, and then in the Commerce Age, we have all the, you know, uh, infantry and cavalry upgrades. So we have hand infantry attack. Um, so pikemen and doppel soldiers get 15% extra attack and sends two Ulans with that. 
And then uh, same thing, but with hit points, 15% extra hit points delivers two Ulans. Uh, and then for cavalry, 15% extra hit points for your cavalry, two Ulans again. Uh, and then we have Palantine settlements. So Reg and German colonial houses provide much more population per building. So increased population cap by 20. So this can be pretty useful if you're, um, you know, sending a lot of shipments. Because what happens is in the early game, you might not have that many houses and you send these shipments and they give you Ulans. And then you run, run out of population space very quickly in doing so. So if you're really struggling with that, then consider this card and you can just, you know, bump up this population cap by a ton and you'll need very few houses and then you won't have any trouble you know booming your economy while getting these ulan shipments with them um, in the fortress age we have more of these uh, hand infantry upgrades so we have doppel Snowler and pikeman attack and hit points increased by 15 percent and three ulans and then we have cavalry combat ulan and war wagon attack and hit points increased by 15 uh, percent and then you get three ulans again Improved mercenaries. Uh, this is a pretty cool one for the Germans since they have so many mercenary options. So mercenary attack and hit points increased by 20%, and you get three Ulans, so it just makes your mercenaries even that much better. And then Germantown farmers. So now you can train settler wagons from mills plus three Ulans. So um, if you're going for a boom and you want to, you know, train villagers out of your town centers and then at the same time train settler wagons out of your farms, um, you could go for that in the Fortress Age with this card. So this could be useful in, in the case where you want to boom a lot with them. And then moving on to the industrial age, uh, we have Solingen Steel, Doppel Solder, attack on hit points increase greatly, but speed drops drastically. So hit points up by 50%, damage up by 50%, speed down by 33%. So this is a, I think, controversial card, just mostly because of the speed decrease. But I would say it's generally worth it if you're not worried about getting kited too hard, um, and if you're planning on sieging, this will be really useful. With the speed thing, I think you can offset a lot of that with the monastery upgrade that you can get for the 20% extra movement speed, and then you're only talking about a 13% decrease. So I think you can get this upgrade, but you should also get the unique monastery upgrade to offset this a little bit, and then your, your doppel snolders will be extremely strong, but still not too slow. Um, so next we have long range infantry hit points, crossbowmen and skirmisher hit points increased uh, 15%. Um, you know, this is good just for your skirmishers, make them a little more tanky. Uh, your skirmishers are extremely good and you'll probably definitely be building them in the late game in combination with war wagons, so definitely worth getting this. Then we have uh, Lipizaner cavalry, Ulan attack and hit points increased by 15%. So if you're going for Ulan heavy strategy, um, definitely take a look at getting this one. Uh, Polish winged hussars ships a squadron of 10 guard hussars instead of ulans you get extra hussars uh, This one I'm, I'm really not a big fan of this one. I think there's there's just better cards to take than this um, You know, it's only 10 hussars and you're gonna be making ulans anyways I mean the hussars are good. I just don't know if it's worth, you know, taking over a card in your deck so you know, it's a fun card if you want to show off these hussars, but I think you know, practically, I, I I don't see this as like an amazing card, but try it out if you want to. It might be fun to play around with. Um, I was just throwing this in here, three horse artillery with Fort Ulans. So if you need some artillery support, you can just throw this card in. Um, Spanish Riding School, all cavalry are faster by 10% and then plus four Ulans. So again, you know, with the uh, Ulan heavy strategy or just with war wagons also, makes them a little bit faster, can get to your opponents and raid them faster, so definitely a good uh, late game card here. And then we have Guild Artisans. Settler Wagons gather from all resources faster. So this is a pretty amazing upgrade if you went for a boom and have a lot of Settler Wagons. So I mean you're talking about a 35% uh, increase in gather rate for all of these kinds of resources. Um, and you know, mainly you'll be on mills and estates at that point, so that's kind of the real advantage. So I would I'm pretty much always taking this card just because um, my main strategy with Germany is just to boom because I like all their late game units. Um, so if you do that, definitely take this card. Um, and then I just threw some of these in here just to kind of show off their mercenary capabilities. Um, and they and they get a lot of uh, mercenaries in these shipments. You know, so they have higher Holy Roman Army, eight Jaegers, five Black Riders, six Lan six Landschnicks. Um, you know, Highland Mercenary Army, seven Highlanders, nine Swiss Pikemen, five Harkabusiers. Um, 
And you see in the description, instead of Ulans, you get extra mercenaries. So not only do you get these, you get extra mercenaries um, instead of the Ulans. So um, pretty good cards if you want to sustain some mercenary production in the late game of shipments. Um, I, I wouldn't probably take both of these, but just choose one that you want um, and just take one of those. And then in combination with you know your other mercenary upgrades, mercenary attack and hit points increased, you can also use the unique monastery upgrade to make this free. So you'll just be sending these for zero gold in the late game, so that could be pretty strong as well. So there's there's a lot of um, combinations you can do with the uh, German unique you know monastery upgrades and these mercenary cards to make your mercenaries really good. So definitely worth taking a look at. And I just threw this in here too, the Elmedi. These are one of my favorite mercenary units, extremely strong. So if you want to send those, you know, send those, they're pretty fun. But I would definitely take at least one of these infinite ones just to kind of have that in your deck for the late game if it gets that far. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and look at the team cards for the Germans. So first off, they have team cheap stables. So, you know, makes everyone's stables cheaper. Um, you know, this is like... It's pretty decent because you're going to be building a lot of stables probably for, you know, your war wagons or Ulans. I haven't really done the math on here. I just find these kind of team cards to be so hard to take over, you know, just three settlers and things like that. I find the outcomes for myself just to be a lot better when I, you know, when I take settlers over these team cards. So I think this could be decent if you're building a lot of stables and your team is too, but um, I think it's hard to say that this is worth fitting in over some of the other cards in this first stage, like mainly the two settlers card. So I probably won't be taking this unless you're, you know, everyone on your team is going to be building a lot of stables, in which case maybe you could fit this in. Then we have Team Teutonic Town Center, Team Town Center attack and hit points increased. Um, I think this card is kind of like pretty bad, honestly. I mean, the only reason to take this card is if you're expecting a, a huge rush from the enemy team, like all four of them rushing, and you and you guys want to defend against it, and then boom or something. Um, in that very particular scenario, you could take this, but in most team games, I don't think people are rushing that hard. You know, maybe a 2v2 game, you see them both rushing, and you have this in a different deck, you pull it out, but um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty niche. Um, definitely, you know, would be good against rushes, but in general... Um, don't don't really think it's worth taking in a lot of games. Maybe, yeah, like I said, I think you know maybe just have this in a side deck, you know, rush defense, and then have this as a card that you can take in an emergency situation. But otherwise, just skip it. Team food silos. Team villagers gather food from farms, mills, and rice paddies faster. Uh, I don't take this one. I think it's kind of bad because you're talking about mills and farms and rice paddies, and realistically, you're not going to see any return from this for a very long time. Uh, because you're not going to have mills for a while. So, you know, I feel like if this was in one of the later ages and it was, you know, for mills at like 25% or something, that would be really good. But I think, you know, to have this in the first stage is kind of pointless. And so I never take this card. Uh, then you have, of course, Team 2 Surgeons. Uh, team Cavalry Attack. Now, this is one I would take um, because it upgrades your Ulans and your War Wagons, which you'll likely be shipping out a lot. Um, so increases heavy cav, light cav, um, shock infantry by 10% attack. Um, oh, sorry, team hand and range cavalry attack increase. That's what it says. Um, and then Germans only extra 5% cavalry attack. Uh, Germans only extra 5% cavalry attack status set to obtainable. Um, I'm not sure what that means exactly. Maybe the German, that means Germans get a 15% bonus. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that, but yeah, it looks like there's some German-specific part of this, too. But either way, it's a very good card um, to take in a, in a large team game where you guys are going to have a lot of cavalry. Uh, then we have Team 2 Settler Wagons. Um, I do take this mainly just to help out, help out my teammates. You know, it's Team 4 Villagers, really, is what this is in the Fortress Age. Um, I think it's pretty good. I think you need to send this pretty early, though. Like, get to the Fortress Agents, and this is, like, one of your first cards, and then your entire team is going to be pretty far ahead of the enemy team in terms of the economy. So I think this can be a really good card. I think you just have to prioritize this and send it pretty early. And you are going to miss out on, like, a lot of your other good cards from Fortress Edge, but just know that, you know, it's a very team-oriented card, obviously. And so you're going to sacrifice some of your own economy and military to help out everyone else on your team. So if you're okay with that, then yeah, go ahead and take this. 
uh, team, a cover wagon shipment for the whole team. Uh, I, I don't think this is really worth it. I mean, you're talking about it's in the industrial age. I think by then everyone can afford to build their own town centers. Maybe if this is in the fortress age, I would take it. But I think, you know, the fact that this is in the industrial age, it's it's kind of terrible, honestly. So I, I never take this card. Uh, then we have Team 2 Mortars, as per usual. Oh, and I left one out here. So Team 2 Mortars and Team 1 Monitor. You know, of course, as I talked about before in my other videos, uh, you know, if the enemy is kind of on the back foot, ship these in, you know, start sieging up all their buildings with everyone on your team having mortars. You know, this is always a very powerful card in the right situation, but the thing is you're, like, at that point in the game, you should already be winning. Um, so it's it's either useful if you already have the team on the back foot, or if they just have so many defenses that you really need mortars, like a lot of mortars. Um, so yeah, it can be okay. Just decide if you want to prioritize this over some of the other cards in your deck or not. Same with Team on Monitor, but for Naval Nets. And then lastly, uh, we have some um, Mercenary Team cards. So Team 10 Kree Allies, Kree Riflemen with a good line of sight and long range. I don't think uh, this Mercenary shipment is that good, to be honest. Um, I think it's okay. Um, but you can only send it once, so I generally don't take it. I don't think it's enough of a game changer to only send it once. However, I do take this card sometimes, and I don't think it's amazing. But, you know, you're shipping in a 4v4, you're shipping 20 Jaegers, 5 to each of your team members. Um, but you can send it infinite times. So, you know, if you have, like, a bunch of trading posts and you have gotten everything else you want, you can just keep shipping, um, you know, Jaegers to everyone on your team over and over again. And with the unique Monastery upgrade, you can make these free, you know, and your Mercenary upgrades can make these even stronger. So if you're going for a Mercenary strategy and you want to help out your team, then I would take this... Um, like I said, I don't think it's an amazing card to take, but it is for sure a fun card to take, and your team will definitely appreciate you for you know helping them get all these Jaegers out and you know defeating the enemy's heavy infantry. So definitely a fun card and pretty good, but I, I wouldn't say amazing at, at that late in the game where you're actually going to be sending this a lot. So that's pretty much all the unique and team cards for the Germans. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and hop into some gameplay so you guys can see how the civilization plays overall. So now into the gameplay portion. So in this game, I was playing a 4v4 game that ended up going to the very late game. So I ended up getting pretty much every possible upgrade while sending a couple different unit combinations out against the enemy just to see how they would do against the Russia Musketeer spam happening. I think this is one of the German specialties. They have a lot of different options between the Skirmishers, Ulans, War Wagons, Doppelsoldners, or Zweihanders as they're called, and their Mercenaries, as well as the Great Economy from Settler Wagons. They're also generally known as the French counter because of their war wagons and Doppelsoldner unique units able uh, ability to counter the French Carassier spam that happens sometimes. To me, Germany is really all about booming into the late game where they become dominant, or at the very least getting to the fortress age to start feeling some of their unique units. I have seen strategies where people do try to utilize their Ulan shipments to go for early pushes or rushes. But I think the real strength and fun lies in getting to the industrial age or later with them. So I generally just like to boom as fast as possible while trying to defend with towers, ulans, and mercenaries, maybe even some artillery if you're having trouble with musket spam. Just be careful with the free ulans as you might run into population issues while booming. If you are facing a sieve that can outboom you like the British, you'll still want to use these ulans to go and try to harass the enemy's economy just to slow them down a little bit. The German dominant economy combined with their extremely strong unique units and mercenaries make for some of the best and most fun late game unit combinations in the game. For example, you can use the war wagon with your skirmishers for a very powerful all ranged anti cav anti infantry combination, or you could mix it up and go for falconets with war wagons or even Jaegers or other mercenaries. You just have so many options as, as the Germans. I think there's a lot of differing opinions on Germany. But I think overall, they're relatively weak in the early game and hit their peak from the Fortress Sage onwards, getting better the longer the game goes on, as long as you're using your troops effectively. So that's pretty much Germany overall. I would definitely recommend trying them out. They're just so much fun to play with, with all the different unit combinations that you can try out, and especially their mercenary strategies, which just allows you to get all those different types of units. So definitely take them for spin. They're a lot of fun and uh, pretty good as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see my new Civ overviews. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.